Something incredible is happening in this video. The user erases part of a tree with his finger, then speaks a prompt of what he wants to see, in this case an elephant in the tree, and the phone computes it and shows it to him, in real time, in AR, merging our imagination with the real world. This is awesome, yes, but what's incredible isn't what we're seeing, it's what we're not seeing. This is built on something called stable diffusion. I'm going to tell you what it is, why everyone will be using it, and hopefully why it won't kill us all in two years. What did he say? Hello puppets, welcome back to the metaverse. I'm Meta Puppet. Links to everything you're about to see will be in the description. Stable Diffusion is a text to image generator. Put simply, you enter a text prompt, a few words or a sentence, and it creates a picture. But there's much larger implications to it, so let me quickly tell you how we got here. In 1996, chess master Gary Kasparov played a six game chess match against IBM supercomputer Deep Blue. Gary won the first match 4-2. In 1997, they had a rematch, and Deep Blue won 3.5 to 2.5. It was the first time AI had matched human intelligence in a particular discipline. What happened was, Deep Blue did an analysis of thousands of chess games in the past, and then extrapolated that information to win. So if Gary thought 5 steps ahead, Deep Blue thought 5 plus 2 or 5 plus 3 steps ahead. This is called brute force. And as the name implies, it's probably the dumbest kind of AI. Now the game of Go or Chinese checkers has far more possible moves than chess. It requires more intuition and so people thought AI would never be able to beat a human. However, in 2016, DeepMind's AlphaGo surprisingly defeated top ranked player Lee Sedol. But it didn't use brute force and it wasn't fed thousands of past games to learn. So how did it win? By basically learning how to dream. DeepMind created a self-supervised learning algorithm that used reinforcement learning. The AI learned the principles of the game and then basically played against itself endlessly in its imagination until it got like really good, good enough to beat the best human. In 2020, GPT-3 was released. It's a language-based AI that produces human-like text. It can recreate and understand any style of writing. So when given a prompt like Romeo and Juliet, it will continue the prompt and write a whole scene in the style of Shakespeare that has never before existed. Developers wondered if it can do it with words, can it do it with pictures? Earlier this year, the company OpenAI released a text-to-image generator called Dolly. You type in some words and an image comes out, but it took about 10 minutes per prompt and it wasn't high quality. And that brings us to today. The company Stability AI released Stable Diffusion a couple months ago. It's 30 times faster than Dolly and it's only 2 gigabytes in size, so it can fit on your phone and no internet connection is required. It takes about 8 seconds per prompt to release a high definition image of anything you can imagine, so it's like Dolly on steroids. There were 600 million images that went into training Stable Diffusion, and like GPT-3, Stable Diffusion cannot plagiarize any of those images. It learned the principles and styles of the artist and photographer who created them, and then it creates new pictures that have never existed before. Some of this is already embedded in Photoshop, and if you're holding an iPhone right now, there's already a neural engine sitting inside it unused, waiting for this kind of AI to be implemented. That's why everybody's going to be using this within the next two years. Okay, so wait a minute. If this AI is so powerful, why is it just being used to write articles and draw pictures? Isn't there a bigger use case for something like this? I'm glad you asked. Stability AI was originally founded in 2020 during the pandemic. The founder, Ima Ahmad Mostak thought that AI could help analyze drug combinations to treat people faster. This kind of tailored medication to an individual can be a game changer in the health field. Another public good that it's being used for is teaching literacy and numeracy to children in refugee camps around the world. This AI is currently teaching children English in 13 months in only one hour a day. And get this, while the AI teaches the children, the children are teaching the AI. So as it gets more efficient, that 13 months will become 12 months and so on. Okay, but are there any negatives or unintended consequences to AI? Well, one issue that comes to mind is digital identity. If AI is creating articles online or pictures or deep fakes in videos, or even generating podcast interviews between real people that never happened in real life, how do you know if it's human or AI? Well, right now, there's metadata attached to files like pictures or documents in your computer. With the current system, that metadata can be changed and the file remains the same. But what's being pushed with this type of AI is a new standard where if the metadata changes, the file will also change. So the picture or article will let you know, hey, somebody messed with the metadata, so it might not be from who you think it is. And in the future, attaching these files to a decentralized blockchain will also make this type of security even stronger. How about that part I mentioned about the possibility of this killing us all? Some believe that we are very close to reaching a technological singularity, which is the point where AI learning becomes exponential and surpasses human intelligence, effectively achieving consciousness. It's the last technical thing we will ever create, and there's a chance 
that it could decide we are the problem and that the world would be better off without us. It doesn't need to happen like in Terminator 2, where we're literally battling robots. It can happen more like a chess match, where it just pits us against each other until we destroy ourselves. It's already been stated that 90% of the misinformation we saw online during the last US presidential election came from AI. And the type of AI that certain governments already have access to is much more powerful than what we have on our phones and laptops. So how do we stop it? Microsoft and Google once had their source code for AI public, but made it private a few years ago because they said it was too powerful to fall into the wrong hands. Imad says that's wrong. This technology should be in the hands of everybody, not just the few, because perhaps the only thing that can stop a bad guy with AI is a good guy with better AI. And so Stability AI has made this free and open source so anyone can use it and build upon it. So an app that can show you an elephant in a tree is incredible, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. Big data plus AI can be put to use in so many ways that it's going to cause a societal shift in the next couple of years. But for now, you can try it for yourself. You can go on Discord and see lots of examples of AI art and the prompts people use to create it. I created this picture using the prompt Al Pacino in the Smurfs Village drinking whiskey. It's quite terrifying, and a lot of this is the stuff of nightmares, but it's also fun and there are some beautiful things that are created too. It's trial and error, but remember, as you're learning what prompts to say, the AI is learning what you want to see. So give it a go. I look forward to seeing what new art you bring into the world. Hit subscribe and I'll see you in the future.